Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Modular. I was invited to provide a piece for the New York Modular Society. Deeply honoured to be asked, I was. And I have to say, it was quite an adventure because the New York Modular Society do things slightly differently. Rather than just saying, hey, hey, give us a piece of music. Right, that's cool. They give you uh, a recipe a challenge, an adventure, if you like. They invite you to take part in a sort of a modular experiment where you're given certain rules and a, and a task to perform and then you supply a piece based upon that. It's very daunting, quite exciting. And in this video, I'm just going to take you through the patch, the thing that I came up with. Now, what they were after was polyrhythms and polymetrics. Hmm tricky <laughs> tricky well thankfully they supplied a sheet which told you exactly what it was that these things mean because there's a lot of confusion i'm confused about it i don't know whether i'm talking about polyrhythms half the time or polymetrics or what the difference is or how they relate or whether one's this or one's the other now i think i do a bit more in a nutshell polymetric is two things more than two things obviously two things which are spinning around a loop if you like where each note is on the same beat they are following the same beat two of them but they are of different lengths and so they go out of sync with each other not on the beat they don't go out of beat sync they go out of loop sync so for instance you've got a loop that's four notes one two three four you've got another one that's six notes it's going at the same speed the same notes one two three four five six before it loops back to the start that's polymetric i can do that all day i love having a three note thing going around next to a four note thing that's going around or a 12 note thing that's going around next to a four note thing it's going around that's good everything's on the same beat the groove is the same what's happening is that you're getting this sort of variation because they're not all looping at the same time so it's not the same thing over and over again it's the same two things if you like but they're against each other differently because they're looping differently it's really interesting i use it a lot particularly with the lattice sequencer over here from tenderfoot because it's a 12 note sequencer and so it's automatically interesting just because it has 12 notes i also use it a lot in the m185 which is what i did here which i'll show you in a bit and so polymetrics not a problem i have no problem with that no problem at all polyrhythms on the other hand that's that's different <laughs> That's different. The easiest way to explain it, or at least at a very basic level, is that it's triplets. You know triplets. You've got a beat one, two, three, four, and then you've got da 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 which are triplets within that. So it's a different rhythm within the main rhythm. And the notes don't line up, but the loop does eventually. So the loop lines up, but the actual notes don't. So you've got like five notes against four notes or seven notes against three notes or six notes against eight notes, that sort of thing. That's more difficult to achieve. Difficult to achieve because of the, the clocking. How do you make that clocking happen? How do you do those gates which aren't together? If you've got one clock coming in, how do you make a clock that's off the beat but on the beat? That was tricky and also to be honest i don't know that i like it that much i mean i think when you come across polyrhythms in nature in music in like more interesting percussive music african music music from other cultures when you hear it and experience it you don't even know that you are and there's something about it which thinks up beautifully that that affects you deeply i think but trying to conjure that up myself with what I have, I found that immensely challenging. Did I do it? Well, yeah. I mean, I did some triplets in the end. I got away with that. <laughs> and I'll try to explain how I got there. If I can remember. How is that even working? I don't know. Well, we'll have a look. So I have to, to take this apart and do something else, of course. So I thought I would jump in and just explain the patch all the bits I had going together, and then you should go and listen to it. If you haven't listened to it already, go and listen to the piece, because only then will you understand, because I'm not going to be performing it again. I'm just going to be showing you the different bits. 
for a quick snippet of what it sounded like all together. Here you go. <laughs> Now there's polymetrics and there's polyrhythms going on in there, I promise. And actually, it hooks in quite nice. <laughs> but then I did work on it really hard. <laughs> I did. I hope you like the arrangement I've got here. This is normally sitting up on the shelf up here. And that was how I worked on it. And then I realised in filming it, that kind of that kind of height is not really going to work. And so it sort of led me to think about, so how could I sort this out? And then I put this down here. And actually, this is completely brilliant. And this is how, if I was doing a, a performance on stage, this is definitely how I would have it uh, sorted out. Because it just brings this much closer to me. This is the thing that I'm going to be working on the most. The sequencing, less so. But this... I really like this. This is working. And so this is what I'm going to be working on. This is like my my main rig now. Everything else to the sides, that's superfluous. That just comes in to give us a little bit of help or ballast from time to time. Trying to work with this arrangement being the main things that I'm using all the time. I mean, that's the plan. Did you need to know that? No, probably not. Who knows? Right. So where should we start? Well... I'll start with the two main bits, I think, because there were two main refrains going on, and they were the polyrhythms. All right. So I'll start with the thing that seemed to be the most prevalent theme throughout, and that was our friend the Descartes voice. <laughs> so let's hear what that was doing. There we go, that one. So this began life as actually something a bit simpler. It's on channel one here, I think. Because this is actually a ping-ponging sequence coming from the black sequencer, which was originally just a forward. And there's also an accidental ratchet. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I wonder how that got in there. I don't know. Anyway, so it started off as this sequence. Uh, and essentially all I did was was play with the filter here. Which is just really so so nice. it's an entire voice so it's got its own filter it's got its own envelopes which are running the filter but after working with it for a while I decided that the, the sequence was not really working so I was just playing with it and I ended up going into let's put that ratchet the accidental ratchet back in and go back to my forward and backwards bit and I just nudged it into a ping pong and this sequence emerged that I've just really liked it's so it's sort of happy it's joyful it has a, a comedic element to it that I really liked and I needed it to be eight notes or four notes and so this has two different ping pong modes it has one where it just goes backwards and forwards But that wouldn't be the same. That would end up being sort of, I don't know, six notes. But with the uh, second ping pong mode, it goes all the way there, then it hits the same note and goes back, then it hits that note and goes that way. So it's always eight notes. It made great for uh, as a sort of like a background where everything else is going on, and then you could bring it in. to be a bit more noticeable. Nothing more complicated than that. Now the one that went against that was from... <laughs> Where was it from? This comes in from here. This, I'm pretty sure, 
it was our friend the even vco from Bifaco. just the square wave out got a little bit of modulation into the pulse width via the 3pt here but most of the action is happening over on the grit filter so the sequence for it is coming from now that's a good question that's coming from channel two from the black sequencer and i will show you what's interesting about it see it's only three notes <laughs> three notes that's all we're after but it's the timing of this that's important so let's uh let's have it playing that's not it so just three notes. And then all the action happened over here in the grid filter, where I just did a bit of that. with modulation uh, on the Bifaco just tripping along but the important thing is how this relates to the Deckard's dream bit so if I bring the Deckard's back in This is going on in fours, and this is going on in threes. Now, what I had to do was find the way of timing it so that this was triplets, one was triplets, and one was on the beat. So to do that, I had to go into the black sequencer. I don't feel I'm explaining this very well, but I had to to go into scale and then change the timing here. So this is on three quarters. I don't really understand exactly what that means. But if I change it back to on the beat, that's on the beat. Now I really like this. It's three notes against four notes. And this is polymetric. So it's doing one, two, three, 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 and it's, it's, le it's, you can feel the vibe, the way that locks into each other. But all the notes are happening on the same beat, albeit the uh, Beckard's voice is going slower. But what I had to do, I had to find a way of making it a polyrhythm. So by changing this scaling here to three quarters, Now got this triplet effect where the loop length is the same but the notes are different and that starts pulling it starts sort of pulling and pushing you oddly and weirdly and i definitely feel it and it's a different feeling see that's again on the beat and i prefer that every day Whereas this is hard, man, it's hard. But it's there, it does something to you. Definitely does something to you. So then with those two together, I'm then playing on this filter. Make some kind of sense i hope i've explained that well enough i mean i'm no expert at all on this polyrhythmic polymetric business this is the first time i've actively attempted to tie two rhythms together in that way uh, you know i just that's not how i intuitively find my way around a modular so it's been very very interesting that i've been pushed into the position of doing this i mean in the brief it said you could do polymetric or polyrhythmic or both 
And so for a while there, as I was building this track up, I was just going to go polymetric because every time I tried to do a, a polyrhythm, I just hated it. <laughs> I didn't like it. Didn't know what to do. I couldn't work out. How am I going to get this to work? And then stumbling upon that, you know, because I had the, I had the, I had this thing going, uh, which I played you a moment ago. This thing. And I was loving that. I thought this is it. This is brilliant. I love it. I could do something with that. But then it's like, but no, I need to make it polyrhythmic. I had other things as well that I was going to bring in as polymetric and this seemed to be the only thing oh I don't know go around in circles with it round in circles with it so that that was what it became cool right yeah nice okay so <laughs> so that was that so moving on then, I had, I then brought in um, another piece of polymetric. So I have a 12 note sequence coming out of the, uh, the M185, which is this. Because it's really easy to, to, to put in sequences in the M185 that are more or less than eight notes long. That sounds funny, but simply because you can put in extra pulses for a step. So a step, you don't, you don't just get the eight steps. You can get, you know, step one, two, then do three a couple of times, and then do seven a couple of times. You build in these long Longer, it's longer sequences. Yeah, does that make sense? So I've got this running 12 notes because I've pulled this note down and this note down a couple in order to make it 12 pulses in the entire thing. But it's running at the same speed as the Deckard's voice and the same rhythm. And so it's just doing a 12 note as opposed to the 8 note on the Deckard's. Yeah? So that's the polymetric. I'll play the two together. So there's the M185 doing its thing. This is running the honor here, the honor oscillator, which is just lovely. And that's going through the very lovely drone suit. And for enveloping, for making the sort of a feel to the filter, the modulation on the filter, I'm taking that out of a channel of the Maestro here. So this is just uh, channel one, it's clocked the same as everything else is clocked, and it's just running uh, a simple straight down uh, LFO, but it's being triggered and is running just one cycle of that, so it's a, it's a ramp down, and that is controlling the cutoff. So those two things run happily all day, and it gives a real bounce. I'm loving the bounce it has. There's something so gloriously happy about it. So next up I had a lead sound coming from the keyboard here. This was always running, so it has no gating on it at all. I think I'd run out of possibilities of that, but I just liked it running as a drone, which I then moved about. And very simply, it's coming from this, the Cassatronics 3340 VCO. It's just a sawtooth output, nothing flashy going on. That is then going through the Intruso ladder filter here. Which is nice, which is being modulated by DivKid. So if 
I turn it up a little bit. delay over here and it's a beautiful sound particularly when you hang on to that filter at the same time and what I did was that I used this to sort of play polyrhythmically, I think, against uh, the, the triplets. So I'll put that back in a second. I would then sort of play well that's polymetrically I'm not entirely sure but it added a, an interesting bit of variation now I did originally at one point have this also changing the the key of the Deckard's voice which was was interesting I liked it but I just couldn't seem to make it couldn't seem to make it work so what I had was I had MIDI in to here channel one I think that might work uh, let's turn that back on So, so kill the gating by holding down. Which really worked. But I just couldn't find changes that I was happy enough with. It was it was just got messy. I couldn't seem to transition from one thing to another, but then that's always a bit of a problem. But it worked quite well. With the uh, 3340 in there as well. that I didn't develop that further but it's 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 gonna stay in my head as an idea for something else for something else I think right on to the surface then had a little bit of action going on also beads I was brave right I was brave now this here is what I'm talking about And this, I did try to run it from the stochastic generator, but for some reason that wasn't seem. For some reason, it wasn't working out. I couldn't seem to get my head around exactly how to time it well enough. Whereas a Turing machine stepped in at this point and was totally brilliant. So this is just doing its thing. It's clocked the same as everything else is. Nothing odd going on, and it's generating notes which are going into the surface via the uh, microscale quantizer and what I did was at some point 
I grab the knob and turned it fully clockwise and that locks in um, six notes because I got it set to six. See that's no good because that's just two notes going round so I want to find So now that's found six notes and that's going round. So that was then playing a six note polymetric against both the 12 note M185 and the eight note Deckard's voice. If you get me. nice so then I thought well I could take a spare channel out of the surface and run it through beads just to see what would happen so I put that through and got sort of something like that going on now it's very easy to overdo beads I find <laughs> Something quite simple was working out nicely. I did do a little bit of fiddling sometimes. And then play with the pitch in order to give it that sort of shimmer. And I was never quite sure where to put it after that. So it never sounded quite right going back. So yeah, the surface then was able to give me another polymetric and also give me a change so I could bring everything down. I tended to have... a bit of that running in the background while this went on. Then played a little bit more of that over the top. drums. Drums provided mostly by the Queen of Pentacles which I'm just starting to understand and uncover in combination with of course the LL8 that they built recently which I'm also <laughs> starting to understand but it's tricky I found it quite tricky getting the hang of uh, the Queen of Pentacles trying to work out the um, the levels of it I found really very difficult trying to get the sound right and only at the very end did I realize that there's a clock input so that I could do things like which is enormously helpful <laughs> but the thing I do love about the Queen of Pentacles is the knob so rather than having to try to program something all the time in order to put a drop in, you can just bring that down or bring it up. That was very, very helpful. Now I just had just simple four to the floor type stuff going on. You know, nothing too dramatic. that really 
I then also had a little bit coming out of the, the T networks over here via the compass. Remember the compass in there somewhere? He's in there. Where are you? There we go. That's running some stuff which is here somewhere. There we go. And that's just rather lovely. I tried really hard to do a bit with the purple uh, to run some white noise through that, and I did have that going at one point. There we go. So really, that's about it, I suppose. That's a, that's about it. That's about it. So I've got two sequencers coming from the Black Sequencer. Um, one running uh, polyrhythmic against the other. I've got a polymetric sequence coming out of the M185. I've got another polymetric coming out of the Turing machine. And then I've got a, a regular rhythm coming out of the LL8 to the Queen of Pentacles. Got a little bit of lead I could play. And then I try to bring together all those elements into some kind of some kind of whole <laughs> moving from one thing to another and it was difficult it took a long time i mean it took once i'd cut i mean I, I i came up with the idea quite quickly a couple of the ideas developed really quickly and then bringing stuff in but i must have spent hours trying to work out how to do uh, the drums in a simple and yet you know positively influenced sort of way i really really wanted a symbol you know a, a splash or a crash symbol just to cover up the ineptitude of my transitions from one thing to another so i'm definitely going to look into the sampling side of the queen of pentacles and start sticking in some splash symbols i think that's what you need <laughs> you need something like that you need a big as you trying to go oh my goodness i'm trying to swap between something definitely need there's going to be a lot of symbols, I think, in, in future tracks, you will see. But once I, I had most of it together, I knew that there was something decent in there. It was just a matter of trying to tease it out. And it took me a couple of days of, uh, of going through it, of changing the odd little note, then trying it again, going through it, trying to work out how to transition from one thing to another. As I say, I got tied up in the transposition of the Deckard's voice for ages, trying to get, trying to work that in there. Why couldn't I make that work? What was it about trying to change those chords that made such a difference? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But once I'd sort of dispensed with that and let the keyboard just focus on that lead sound, let that do its thing, it then seemed to simplify and started opening up. And I kind of found it at the end of another take. I'd just been filming another 20 minutes and it was sort of all right, sort of all right. And then I was just having this little jam at the end and it was so nice that I thought, right, I'm going to start here and keep on going. So I did. I started it and then just built back into the track again. And that was almost it. And I did one more take. And I think having learned something from there and that seemed to be, that seemed to be good enough. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know really. I think what's interesting about the, the polyrhythmic thing is that you do get into the groove. You get into the groove of the of the triplets against the other one, you know, both happening together, and you're you're sort of feeling that and you're you've got a thing going on. But then as you fade that out and bring in the 12 step, the whole thing feels like it speeds up. It doesn't, but it feels like it does. There's this you go from this polyrhythmic sense of of sort of pulse and pull and push going on. And then it feels like it tightens up. It pulls everything together. And at that point, it feels like it's, it's sort of somehow speeded up or got into clarity. And you have this whole other thing going on. And then you can enjoy that and the polymetrics. And they all, you know, they all find each other nicely. And you're going, well, this is great. And then you bring those triplets back in. And then it's, it starts to ooze. And it starts to, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And then it finds itself again. It's fascinating, totally fascinating. Will I do a lot of polyrhythmic things in the future? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Interesting, interesting. Uh, but if I hadn't found that three-quarter mode in the Black Sequencer, I'm not sure how I would have worked it out. I mean, they mention in the thing about the the clock divider, the A162 from Dofa, which I have. 
but I could not work out how you make that do poly rhythms. How how was how, what? <laughs> they always seem to be all seem to be on the nose, as far as I could work out. Except for when you put it in, I don't know, we put it in other modes, and I didn't, I just didn't get it. I mean, I'm honestly, I'm reading the instructions, and I'm going, I don't know. And it seems, as far as I could see. All the triggers lined up. They always seem to be in the same place with each other. I couldn't work out how you could use that to be off. Because with polyrhythms, none of the notes actually hit on the same time, except for the first one, I think. Then after that, it's all off. Then it's the next one. It's all off, and it's the next one. So, I don't know. That needs a further exploration from my point of view, I think. And I'm sure there's plenty of people who can stick in the comments exactly what it is I should be doing in order to achieve that sort of thing. I also find it really interesting that polyrhythms is one of those words that's banded around a lot. It's it's in everything. Everything is polyrhythms. Oh, we can do polyrhythms, no problem. Do we want that? Is that what everybody wants? I don't know. I don't know. And are they actually really talking about polyrhythms or are they talking about polymetrics? Because those are, as I say, very different things. Just because you've got different length loops you know, you've got your 16 steps and you've got a 12 step, you maybe got a four step. Those are polymetrics, not polyrhythms. So maybe that's what mostly people are talking about, because that's easy. That's fun. That feels good. Polyrhythms. I don't know. That means stuffing a different number of notes into the same space. And that's that's interesting. That's very interesting. So a massive thanks to the New York Modular Society for pushing me into doing something weird and uncomfortable that was that was really great i hope whatever it was i produced was of some kind of use to somebody i don't know it was a happy tune a happy tune which is good i'm happy with that but now it's time for me to move on and go and do something else so thanks for watching do uh subscribe sign up that kind of thing oh look mugs Get yourself a mug. Why don't you? Get yourself a mug. And I'll see you soon. In the meantime, go make some tunes.